Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Friday, April 7th, 2023. This is edition number 65 of season 8 as we continue working our way through the Westminster Confession of Faith. We are in chapter 11 on the doctrine of justification. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. If you want to find out more information about the church, you can visit our website. That information will be available to you at the conclusion of this devotional. Let's pray first, and then we'll consider paragraph number four together today. Let's pray. Father, as we come again to your word, we come in humble expectation that you will guide and teach us. We thank you that you have revealed yourself in your word. And we thank you that you have been pleased by your grace to rescue helpless sinners from themselves. We thank you for the work of the Lord Jesus Christ who secured our justification. He who knew no sin became sin for our sake that we might have peace with you. And we pray that we would daily deal with our own sin in that we confess it to you, keeping short accounts of it to you. And we pray that you'd help us to walk in the newness of life that you have given us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, the Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 11, paragraph number four, though brief, does uh, say a lot. In fact, it's actually one of the debates that the Puritans had about the question of justification as far as the extent of it into eternity. That is to say, in eternity past, were all those who elect actually justified. This, that is to say, an eternal justification. So, if I am a Christian today, I have been justified by faith through the work of Christ, but was I always justified in, uh, even in my conception? Was I born a justified sinner? That's the question that paragraph 4 seeks to uh, answer, which says God did from all eternity decree to justify all the elect, and Christ did in the fullness of time die for their sins and rise again for their justification. Nevertheless, they are not justified until the Holy Spirit doth in due time actually, actually apply Christ unto them. And so it goes without saying, of course, that as, as those who believe in uh, God's eternal decree that God ordains, he predestinates all things that happen, uh, including the elect that would come to faith in Christ. That is to say that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ today, you are such because God had determined to save you in eternity past. From all eternity, he had determined to save you. He had determined to give to you the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that goes without saying. We see that there in the very opening phrase of the paragraph. And as we look at uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, verses that we have considered many times already throughout um, throughout this devotional, but Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30, um, there uh, we read, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he, also, he called, he also justified. And those whom he justifieth, justified, he also glorified. So it is safe to say, of course, that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ today, that you were predestined by God from eternity past to be justified in him. That is, through faith, believing in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that uh, is something that we have dealt with many times, even Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1. And in uh, verse 2, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctifying sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, and then jumping down to verse 19 of 1 Peter 1, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. And so that completes the, the statements that are made there and Christ did, in the fullness of time, die for their sins, arise again for their justification. Now, the question comes, of course, here is, what about the saints of old? That is to say, the, those people in the Old Testament, were they justified in the same way in which we are um, today? And paragraph 6 answers that question. The justification of believers under the Old Testament was, in all these respects, one and the same with the justification of believers under the New Testament. Now, I'll deal with that more fully when we get to it in due course. But they looked forward, of course, to that which Christ 
would do, and the Holy Spirit did, of course, apply that to them. And so justification in the Old Testament was much the same as it is in the New. However, the application of God's eternal decree to justify the elect is not actually applied to them until the Holy Spirit works faith in the elect sinner. And that's what the confession goes on to say. And so while we recognize, according to Galatians chapter 4, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. While we acknowledge that there was a specific time and place in which God, according to his eternal decree, was going to give his Son to be the God-man and walk this earth, ministering and serving and then dying for sinners, dying for the elect. While we acknowledge that even the Apostle Paul makes reference to this in Romans chapter 4, In verse 25, uh, there we read, Who was delivered, that is Christ, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification, that is to say his resurrection. All of these things are necessary. They were all necessary. But what the paragraph is seeking to accomplish here is to show us when our justification is applied. That is to say, when is the work of Christ applied to us? And... and um, and so it says that there, nevertheless, they are not, that is to say, the elect are not justified. I wasn't born a justified sinner. I wasn't born righteous in God's sight. I was born a sinner, justly deserving his displeasure, his wrath. Um, I wasn't actually declared righteous until Christ's righteousness was imputed to me by faith, that faith that comes to me through the Holy Spirit. And so it says that when it says they are not justified until the Holy Spirit doth in due time actually apply Christ unto them. And so we remain as those who are born normally, every person is born not converted, not a Christian. There are some exceptions to that, and we have two in the Bible, most definitely John the Baptist and probably more, most likely Jeremiah. And there may be others throughout history that are known only to God, that there may be children that were born into Christian families that never, and as they reflected on their past, there's never been a day they didn't love the Lord Jesus Christ. But be that as it may, most of us have come to Christ at some point later um, when the Spirit of God applied the work of Christ to them. Yes, they were determined, they decreed to be saved, to be rescued from their sin, but now that that determination, that decree of God is applied to them and they are granted faith to believe. And so the state of which we are in is described for us by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. And also we see in Titus chapter 3, uh, verses 3 uh, through uh, 7, Titus chapter 3 and uh, verses 3 through 7, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to, uh, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. When was the Apostle Paul justified, declared not guilty, declared righteous for the righteousness of Christ? Not until the Holy Spirit applied it to him. And we know of that event, of course, that's Acts chapter 9, that's the Damascus Road when Paul was converted. Was he always known by God to be one of the elect? Absolutely. When was, that, when was it applied to them? When the Holy Spirit, in due time, de determined to do so. At the exact moment, not one second before, not one second later, at the exact moment, the Holy Spirit then took the work of Christ, all that he accomplished for Paul, and applied it to him 
and gave him the gift of faith that he would, in fact, believe. And so we are not technically justified in God's sight until the Holy Spirit applies that work of Christ to us in due time. But what is encouraging here in this paragraph, and though it doesn't come right out and say this, but I am saying it, is that all those that God has determined to save, He does, in fact, save. And so I was born Mar March 3, 1966. And I came to Christ much later in life, probably in my early 20s. Don't exactly know. I made a profession of faith when I was 8 years old, and I spent the next 12 years of my life seeking to disprove it. But be that as it may, God applied Christ to me at the right moment. It wasn't prior to me being 8 years old, apparently, and more than likely it wasn't prior to me being 20 years old. But whatever the case may be, God in eternity past had determined to save me, and nothing was going to stop that. Nothing was going to change that. The Holy Spirit was going to, in due time, apply the work of Christ to me savingly so that I might have the gift of faith that I might then believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then be saved. And so it's encouraging to know that God doesn't lose one. He doesn't declare us not guilty until such time as the Holy Spirit applies that work of Christ to us. But He doesn't lose us either. He knows where His elect are. He knows who the elect are that are living in this world right now who have yet to bow the knee to Christ. He knows where they are, and He will indeed apply the work of Christ by His Spirit to that individual when He is ready. He will never, ever lose one. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to reach me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Monday edition, when we continue looking at um, chapter 11, we'll, co we'll consider paragraph number 5. And then on the Tuesday edition, we'll complete chapter 11, and then I will be on vacation for a week, and so there won't be another uh, devotional until the following Wednesday. So just to give you a little bit of a heads up about where we're going over the next week or so. But until then, may the Lord richly bless you in all that you do.